When loggers were cutting these monster kauri trees in the early 50s, truckers probably figured loads and trucks wouldn't get much bigger than this. But the maturing of the huge forestry resource of the central North Island, much of which was planted out during the depression years of the 30s in the Kayangaroa region, demanded serious muscle to cope with the cuts that were coming on stream during the 50s and 60s. Muscle like this Cummings equipped C501 Kenworth working for Mahanga Logging. There's 600 horsepower under that snout, and when you're dragging stems out of the bush, you need every one of them. The harvest in the Kayangaroa and surrounding forestry estates is around 5 million ton a year at present. When you consider that every one of those logs is carried by truck, in fact it'll probably be handled by several trucks by the time it gets to its final destination, it's not hard to imagine the size of the trucking operation in the region. You'll find the biggest concentration of oversized rigs in New Zealand working in the Kayangaroa and in the central forest region. Combined, these estates encompass around 800,000 hectares of timber in the volcanic plateau country of the North Island. Kayangaroa is the land of the giants and the trucking gear is predominantly American or Canadian. This is heavy duty country and the gear has to be overbuilt and oversized to handle the pain in this game. Self-loader logging is typical of the type of operator in this country. Their Western Star Constellation 8x6 tri-drive is typical of this type of gear. About a dozen of these tri-drives work these forests and if you've ever wondered why they need that extra diff, you'd best ask the guy at the wheel. Self-loader logging driver Andy Broadley explains. We mainly need them for traction out of the uh, skids that we go into, particularly during winter and, and uh, even some summer periods. With all the mud and uh, all the pumice grounds out here, uh, at times we can be almost up to our hubs in, uh, in mud and we just need that extra axle for that drive, whereas the dolly vehicles can't even go into the places that uh, we go to sometimes, particularly in winter. This Constellation is a sister ship to Andy's rig and they're both specced with 14.6 litre Cat C15 power plants. There's usually a bit of a queue at the Weybridge, especially when an off-road double is weighing up, such as this C501 Kenworth. These tri-drives and their trailers tear at about 20 tonne and they're asked to cut up to 70 tonne of stems. But it's not just the weight that makes these rigs oversize, it's their length, as those logs can get up to 35 metres long and at times the total length of these combinations can reach between 40 and 50 metres.
logging truck may be the most glamorous piece of iron in the bush, but it's totally dependent on the hard-working teams of bushmen to earn its living. And every logging rig driver knows and acknowledges that the bush gang boys earn their pay the hard way. The ground in the central North Island is mostly volcanic in origin, and it's not unusual for sinkholes to appear on the track. And when it gets wet, keeping traction can be a fight. Tri drives have proven their worth over several decades now and are a mainstay in the bush.